Hello everyone around the world. Welcome back to my channel, Adrenal Bacasso Events Ministry. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so so that you'll be notified of my new videos. Before I will release this very important message, I would like to encourage you all to read your Bible and apply His words every day. If you would like to be ministered to, to be empowered to, to be encouraged to, to know about Jesus, get the Father, get the Son, get the Holy Spirit. If you want to end up in heaven, and if you would, if you would like to be raptured or to be taken in heaven, so you'll be able to find out all the qualities, all the qualifications, the blessings, His purpose, His plans for your life only in His words. So read your Bible and apply His words daily. Okay, that's a reminder, guys. But you don't have to if you don't want to, but without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. All right, this is the word for you that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. This is God's word, letter A, that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Okay, guys. God's word, letter A, the Holy Spirit spoke to me last November 22, 2023. The title of this message is, what is a personal relationship with God Jesus? All right, so the word says, Your church attendance and religious deeds are not a guarantee of your eternal salvation in heaven. For in fact, lots of church attendees are heading to hell. You must have a personal you must have, again, you must have a personal relationship with God, Jesus Christ. What is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? So I did a research, guys. So you can search this to yourself if you want to verify. So I have uh, put the website in my description below okay so this is the reference reference from www.polishednetwork.org what does it mean to have a relationship with jesus having a personal relationship with jesus may seem like an odd concept after all, we can't see him. He doesn't go to work every day or physically gather with friends and family over the dinner table. I'm unable to text him, follow his Twitter account, or friend him on Facebook. However, a little over 2,000 years ago, he did walk the earth while his journey here may seem ancient and irrelevant. It is precisely what enables you and me to know him personally and intimately. Through taking on flesh and living a sinless life, Jesus Christ was able to accomplish for us what we could not do on our own that of meeting the standards of a holy and perfect God. Serving as our substitute, His life, death, and resurrection allows us to freely relate with our Creator. Jesus calls us friend in the Bible. That is in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 15. A relationship with Him in a is a relationship again a relationship with him it means Jesus is a relationship of intimacy and security of being totally known and totally accepted it is not a relationship of equals however Jesus is fully God as well as fully man and as such he remains Lord of heaven and earth but unlike an unmerciful dictator Jesus uses his authority to usher his followers 
into greater freedom. Contrary to most concepts of power, Jesus wielded his power through complete humility, thus inviting us into intimate fellowship with him. It is a relationship, again, it is a relationship where we can be loved completely, challenged to grow in our faith, and transformed into the exact person he created us to be. So there's another reference, guys. You can check it out as well in my description below. That is from www.gotquestions.org. Question. What does it mean to have a personal relationship? Again, what does it mean to have a personal relationship with God? Answer. Having a personal relationship with God begins the moment we realize our need for Him. Admit we are sinners and in faith receive Jesus Christ as Savior. God, our Heavenly Father, has always desired to be close to us, to have a relationship with us. Before, a before Adam sinned, again, before Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden, that is in Genesis chapter 3, both he and Eve knew God on an intimate, intimate, again, both he and Eve knew God on an intimate, personal level. They walked with him in the garden and talked darkly to him. Due to the sin of man, we became separated and disconnected from God. What many people do not know, realize, or care about is that Jesus gave us the most amazing gift, the opportunity to spend eternity with God if we trust in Him. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord, that is in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, God became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ to take on our sin be killed, and then be raised to life again, proving his victory over sin and death. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's, that is in the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 1. If we accept this gift, we have become acceptable to God and can have relationship with him. Those who have a personal relationship with God include God in their, their, in their daily lives. They pray to Him, read His Word, and meditate in His verses in an effort to get to know Him even better. Those who have a personal relationship with God pray for wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5, which is the most valuable asset we could ever have. They take the request to him, asking in Jesus' name, that is in the book of John 15 verse 16. Jesus is the one who loves us enough to give his life for us, Romans chapter 5 verse 8, and he is the one who bridged the gap between us and God. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as our counselor. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it is it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. That is in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 17. Jesus said this before he died, and after he died, the Holy Spirit became available to all who earnestly seek to receive him. He is the one who lives in the hearts of believers and never leaves. He counsels us, teaches us truths, and changes our hearts. Without this divine Holy Spirit, we would not have the ability to fight against evil and temptations. But since we do 
have him, we begin to produce the fruit that comes from allowing the spirit to control us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. This personal relationship with God is not as hard to find as we might think. And there's no mysterious formula for getting it. As soon as we become children of God, we receive the Holy Spirit who will begin to work on our hearts. We should pray without ceasing, read the Bible, and join a Bible-believing church. All these things will help us to grow spiritually, trusting in God to get us through, through each day and believing that He is our sustainer is the way to have a relationship with Him. Although we may not see changes immediately, we will begin to see them over time and all the truths will become clear. And then here's the word again, guys. You and I must be born again. Born again is not a religion, but it's a commandment to enter heaven. What is a born again means? That is uh, www.gotquestions.org. It says, okay, the question is, what does it mean to be a born again Christian? Answer, the classic passage from the Bible that, Answers to this question is John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. You guys can read it all. I wrote it down here in the description below. So you can read that uh, ch verse, uh, no, chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. Okay, so that's your assignment. And then, yeah, you just read that one. And then here, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking to Nicodemus. Okay, so I think I was just going to read it for you guys. <laughs> but then, the Lord Jesus Christ is talking to Nicodemus, a prominent Pharisee and a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling body of the Jews. Nicodemus had come to Jesus at night with some questions. As Jesus talked with Nicodemus, he said, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth birth the spirit you should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again that is in john chapter 3 verses 3 to 7 again verse john 3 verses 3 to 7 and again guys i thought that i read the whole thing but this uh reference it just mentioned that you're gonna this is an ad lib um you get a need to read the chapter john chapter 3 verses 1 to 21 if you would like to verify the word Again, continue. The phrase translated born again can also be translated as born from above. Nicodemus had a real need. He needed a change of his heart, a spiritual transformation that could only come from above. New birth, being born again, is an act of God whereby eternal life is imparted to the person who believes that is in the book of Second Corinthians chapter five seventeen. Okay, chapter five verse seventeen. That's what I mean. And then Titus chapter three verse five. First Peter chapter one verse three. First John chapter two verse twenty nine. Chapter three verse nine. Chapter four verse seven. Chapter five verses one to four to four and chapter eighteen. All right. So John. Uh, chapter 1 verses 12 to 13 indicates that being born again also carries the idea of becoming children of God through trust in the name of Jesus Christ. The question logically comes, why does a person need, need to be born again? 
The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says, And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. That is in KGV, New King James Version. To the Romans he wrote, For all have sinned and, th and fall. Again, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Sinners are spiritually dead. Again, sinners are spiritually dead. When they receive spiritual life through faith in Christ, the Bible likens it to a rebirth. Only those who are born again have their sins forgiven and have a relationship with God. Twice in his conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus stressed the truth that one must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. That is in John chapter 3 verse 3 and 5. Being born once makes us children. Sorry, guys. Being born once makes us children of God. Sorry about that. And we share Adam's corruption. We need a second birth, a spiritual birth, to make us children of God. We must be born again. How does the new birth come to be? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 9 states, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God, so that no one can boast. When one is saved, he has been born again, spiritually renewed, and is now a child of God by right of the new birth. Faith in Jesus Christ, the one who paid the penalty of sin when he died on the cross, is the means by which is born again. Therefore, if anyone is again, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone; the new has come. That is in the book of Second uh, Corinthians, chapter five, verse seventeen. If you have never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, will you consider the prompting of the Holy Spirit as it speaks to your heart? You need to be born again. Will you pray a prayer of repentance and faith and become a new creation in Christ today? Yet to all who receive Him, to those who believe in Him, his, He gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. That is in the book of John, chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. Have you made the decision for Christ because of what you have read here? You guys think about it. That's the invitation. So that's the end of the blog. So... I have another reference, guys. This is from Google-Miriam-Webster Dictionary. What does it mean to be born again? It means of relating to or being usually a Christian person who has made a renewed or confirmed commitment of faith, especially after an intense religious experience. This is what I'm saying, guys. Born again means change your wicked lifestyles into a righteous lifestyle that mirrors the life of Jesus Christ. That's the word, guys. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord, your God, and your Savior, today is the day of your salvation. Don't wait tomorrow because tomorrow is no guarantee for you. You might get, you might get to die today or tomorrow or next month without Jesus Christ. You will go to hell. Not in purgatory, but in hell. Without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell again. All right, all you have to do is to repent. Invite Jesus Christ as your Lord, your God, and your Savior, and then promise Him to follow Him for the rest of your life. Again, for the rest of your life. This is your first step of your Christianity. It is not a baptism of little baby. It is not biblical. It is not in the Bible. Period. You can pray your own simple prayer, or you can pray along with a simple prayer. Here you go. Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for all my sins. Please come into my heart and into my life and be my Lord, my God, and my Savior. From now on, Jesus, I will follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. So if you pray the simple prayer, according to the Bible, your name is written in the book of life. But 
if you are still rejecting Jesus Christ as your Lord, your God, and your Savior because you believe that you can, you can be saved by your own deeds and you believe that you're God. You're, 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 you're on your God. Sorry. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord, your God, and your Savior, you are still rejecting Him according to the Bible. In the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 15, it says, If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, was casted in the lake of fire. So guys, take this as a warning and invitation. You have a blessed day. Bye-bye.